my voice through art. You know, I was able to express myself through, you know, a visual form. There's a lot of forces that would keep you from doing what you love, especially with art. So, I mean, I would say if, if, you're, if you're a youngster, you know, I mean, I don't want it to sound bad, but kind of like, just kind of be rebellious and don't listen to what people tell you, you know, like for the sake of art, if that's what that we're talking about here, then, you know, just do what you love and it's going to take a lot of sacrifice. My work is very much process oriented. You know, I, I you know, it's definitely like done in layers. an adult that would like to inspire a kid I mean just support them as much as you can uh, either from you know just telling them that they're doing a great job and that their art is really great to supporting them financially you know like or just an artist in general always needs support financially um, but I think if you're a youngster and you're seeing that there's uh, you know people are, are, are liking what you're doing and they're supporting you then it, it really you know inspires them to like keep pushing and keep pushing because that's really the reason why I'm here doing doing this is because people supported me and made me feel right doing what I'm doing, you know? Because if it felt wrong, then I probably wouldn't do it because I get discouraged kind of easily. Um, but, you know, people have shown me nothing but love, you know, and, uh, you know, it's, it's helped me out a lot. I've been an artist, I've, I've never just got stuck on, on one media, one style, like incorporating aerosol and, and, and everything. And um, like Ari was saying about oils, I, I've, I tried oils one time and I'm very, I mean, I, I'm a patient person, but when it comes to my artwork, I like, I want to see, you know, the finished product. Like this, he made this for my birthday. For your yeah, two yeah. years ago, yeah, he, uh, yeah, he made it for me, he made me cry when I come on. Mm. He said, I got something for you that you always like, and, and that, he made it for you. Yeah, he made it for me. I never thought I'd be showing in a gallery, you know, like I am today, you know, based on the background that I have, you know, starting with graffiti art, you know. Um, but if anything you put your heart into is possible, you know, just push, push the sky's the limit, just do what you love and, and, you know, hopefully you have support, you know, and that, that alone right there will just rise to the top. And your kids do art as well. Yeah. What could be that? This is Tech Now and DJ, uh, DJ 8-Bit. And what, how old are they? My son is 11 and she's mine. They got their own name for it. They're ready to have it. Yeah, but just pursue, pursue your dreams. Just, you know, aim big and uh, the sky's the limit. Once you reach that level, just stay humble and, and uh, you know, you'll end up inspiring other people. It's a very quickie art scene. Um, you have to be in with the in crowd there, and if you're not, you're not going anywhere. Um, I fortunately, you know, got in with some people. I had, when I first started painting again, it was my second show, some guy came up to me and was like, your work is great. You need to call this gallery, tell them I sent you. And then I looked him up and it happened to one of my favorite artists in the world. And I was like, holy crap, Scott Brooks just talked to me. <laughs> and if you don't know Scott Brooks, you need to look him up because his work is amazing. But it blew me away. Just that, hello, I like your work, got me in. And then other people started talking to me, but everyone's not that lucky. And I feel like, yes, it takes part talent, but it takes a lot of luck to get by. If, if you want to live as an artist. I was always painting. I remember when I was four, I painted a lot of, with crayon, a lot of religious paintings. I was oddly obsessed with um, 
why I never saw women priests. So I would always draw a woman priest. My mom would go, no, that's not right. You have to change that. From there, I just always, I'd pick up paints, I'd pick up anything through middle school, through high school. Um, I just, something inside of me that I knew I always wanted to paint. I said I want to be poor in painting. And what made me like, I said when I was 17, and I'm like, what was I thinking? Um, I got married when I was very young. And um, when I had kids, my husband, um, he said it interfered with um, raising the children, and he locked all my stuff away. It was very strange. I was weird about sex. I was weird about, you know, I was awkward about my body, and like who was in, you know, in their teen years. But um, a lot of my friends would brag a lot about having sex. And but besides that, you know, my mother being religious, it, it rubbed off on me. And hearing them talk so casually about it really bothered me. But even in high school, my paintings were very phallic. It was, you know, something that was kind of on my mind. I was curious about it, but I didn't want to be so casual about it. But oddly, you know, I started painting a lot of things like that. And then when I was pregnant, it changed to very cute little fairy-like, you know, a lot of babies, you know, I was very into my babies. But after the injury, things just got crazy. Uh, I never touched oil paints at all um, until then. And then I just wanted to paint everything oil paint. Um, it was very different. It was um, rough. Um, it was very textured. Um, and definitely, I never sketched. I still don't do that now. I, I don't sketch. I just start painting. And whatever pours out on the canvas is what happens. Um, I had a relationship. And when I ended it, he was not keen on me ending it. Um, and I went to walk home one night, and I, I just didn't make it to my apartment. I had no idea what happened. I don't remember any of it. I woke up in an ambulance. Um, apparently, someone in the neighborhood um, made an anonymous phone call to 911. Um, I was underneath a van in a parking lot. And I, I don't know if I hid there or I was put there. When I woke up in the ambulance, you know, everything was different. Um, I didn't want to see anybody after that. And um, that first painting, there, I had a customer who saw me paint or draw something. And I had no health insurance. And she, was a, she wanted to help me out. And so she said, hey, can I commission a painting from you? And I like nudes, and I like this, and I like your style. So I'm just going to let you do whatever. And so I did. And I painted that Blue Face Killer painting, and I really enjoyed every second of it. I can't recreate the way I used to paint. I don't really remember how I did it or what I was thinking when I was doing it. I know I was definitely still as emotionally charged as I am now about it. I can't relate to it, um, and I think I just try not to think about it. I just want to keep moving forward. Um, I was very inspired by my trip to Italy, and as far as the beautiful dreamers go, um, I intend to take as many characters out of La Primavera and have them dreaming whatever it is that, that lands on you know, my canvas at the moment. I don't plan it out, it just happens. What do you think one of the biggest misconceptions would be about your art? Some of the paintings that uh, some people say, oh, it's so cute, would probably be some of my more tortured moments. So <laughs> it always makes me laugh. I'm like, yeah, it's a really cute time for me. <laughs> and, like they have no idea, and I could see how they misunderstand. But um, I'm moved. and. And that's when I, I feel like, you know, I'm glad I did it. You know, I'm always happy to hear when somebody understands it. But it's, it's not often. I, I find it brutal and beautiful. And I, I love to paint those things. I like what Barbara Kruger said, be vigilant, always understand. You know, it isn't a dichotomy. There's, there's all these different levels to these structures. Empty your mind. Your mind. Be formless. Shapeless. Shapeless. Like water. Like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup.
You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a tea bottle, it becomes the tea bottle. The water can flow or it can crash. The water, my friend. I came to some trouble, got kicked out of school when I was 15. A uh, school administrator kind of took me under the wing, got me back to school immediately and uh, introduced me to an art teacher. Then introduced me to an environment program out in LA. Uh, gives university level art classes to, um, to high school students. It was the first time you had somebody told me, you could you could make a living off of your art. Like you could, you could be an artist, you can be a, a professional artist. Because up until that point, I never heard anything positive about, about the artwork that I was making. Then, and that's, I mean, that really goes to show that all you need is an opportunity. Like, yeah. just, just give people the opportunity. Don't treat people like criminals. Don't criminalize them. You know, especially youth. Like, if you, you have a screwed up school system, you know, underfunded school system, and you're treating them like criminals. I want people to know that, that these issues can be dealt with, you know, I don't want people to feel powerless. I mean, I think that a lot of people get frustrated and angry and feel as if they're, they're just disempowered, you know, and, and I think that that is the, the biggest lie that we're told, you know, that we can't make a difference. And yes, there's, there's these huge social structures, but it, but we, we, we buy into them, like that idea that that these these institutions are in our head. You know, we we accept them every day. You know, and to understand that we can unravel that. You know, to start taking it apart from the point of contact where there is that that violence. You know, and to be able to see the beauty in that struggle and the resilience. You know, and to understand that that there is a there is a sense of urgency of the things that we need to take care of. You know, and uh, and for me there. There is the human aspect of it, and there's also just the sheer, like, senselessness of it. You know, where where it's not sustainable. You know, we're 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 going 100 miles per hour at a you know <laughs> at a brick wall. You know, where it's gonna crash. We all know it. I mean, the financial system is being propped up. Uh, you know, and and there's a lot of things that, that happen. And and I really believe that that the majority of people are good, you know, I really do believe that. We get into this whole, you know, psychoanalysis thing of nature versus nurture, but I think that the majority of people are, are very basic people. They want very basic things and they're good and they won't harm other people, but there are enough people that are put through enough violence, you know, to create these different systems, you know, and there are people at the top that are very responsible for it, you know, and I think these people can be held accountable. They're not these conspiracy theories, you know, it's it's very real, you know, it's very basic. It's NAFTA, you know, it's CAFTA, it's these free trade agreements, it's the breaking of unions, it's all these different things that that they're all tied into this very neoliberal agenda, you know, and, and you know, Janet Napolitano being put in charge of the UC systems, you know, it's all these things that, that it's an agenda that's being pushed and we need to be a community and, and pull together as, as human beings, you know, and understand that what's going on in, in everywhere, all over the world, it's all part of, and usually starts here in the United States. You know, when I spent some time down in, uh, in Chiapas with the Zapatistas, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of people in the, in the delegation that were there, they, one of, one of the persons asked, um, one of the, the Zapatistas in the Junta de Buen Corino, they said, you know, what can we do to help? And they said, go home and work in your community. They're like, all our problems stem from the U.S. They're like, go make a change there. That's what you can do to help us. And I, and I really believe that, that we can help so many people in so many different parts of the world, including our own communities, if we just get involved, you know? Just, and recognize that everything's interconnected and not see each other as adversaries. <laughs>